Brother Roy, if you're ready. Uh, if you've done such a good job this morning, we're going to let him do it again tonight. So. I think I'm on. It's good to see everybody. Your faces look pretty. You're smiling great big. And uh, I talked to Tim this afternoon. Did you all know he has a birthday next Sunday? Huh? Wednesday. A week from Wednesday. He was born on Good Friday, April the 13th. What did I say? Good? Anyway, he's having a birthday. <laughs> hey, man. Don't tell him I told you. Uh, turn, if you will, to Numbers 32. I, again, I'm, uh, I don't know if I'll ever get over the jitteries or not, but uh, uh, I'm just as jittery now as I was this morning. And, uh, you know, you can prepare and prepare and sometime uh, think you got it but then you know you don't got it it's, God's got to have it and if God's got it we'll have it and uh, let me say I, I'm glad that Paul and I have chosen this church to make our home uh, you all have made us feel so welcome you have made us feel right at home here and we thank you for that. It means a whole bunch to us. Uh, I, I do, or maybe I have, but I don't think so. I want to thank all of you that come over and helped us on load and worked in that way. It was a blessing to see all of you there and work the way you did to get us on loaded. Uh, we're still on loading boxes uh, we've about got them all done. You can actually get through the house now without tripping uh, if you take your time and turn on a light. Uh, but uh, uh, we're, we're getting there. And uh, uh, on, on Easter Day, or uh, at week, uh, Carla, our older daughter, is coming down, her and her husband and her three children and their spouses and all of her grandkids will be at our house uh, for three or four days and uh, uh, we may have a tent out in the yard before they get gone but <laughs> gonna be a house full of us over there and most of them will be at church on Sunday so turn if you will to uh, Numbers 32 and uh, you can be seated you don't have to stand uh, I want to quickly go through that. Uh, I'm going to hit skip uh, scriptures as I read through it. I want to go to verse 32. Is, I mean, verse 23 is where I want to go. Uh, but just kind of let me hit skip and uh, kind of get the idea of what's going on here. Verse 1, it said, Now the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and a, and a great, uh, a very great multitude, had a very great multitude of cattle, and and when, uh, when they saw the land of Jazer uh, and uh, Gildad, Gildadad, that they uh, beheld the place uh, was a place for cattle. And it said in verse number five, wherefore said they, if, if we find grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto us, unto thy servant for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. In other words, they didn't want to go over. They wanted to stay on the side that they were on. And they said, And Moses said unto the children of Reuben, to children of Gad, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore, and wherefore discourage the hearts of the children of Israel? In verse 10, And said, And the Lord's anger was kindled in the same time, and he, uh, and he swore, saying, 
Uh, surely none of the men that come up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see uh, the land which I swore unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, save Joshua and Caleb, uh, for they have wholly followed the Lord. Verse 13, and the Lord's anger was kindled against, against Israel, and he made uh, them wander in the wilderness um, 40 years until all the generations that had uh, evil in the sight of the Lord was, the cons was consumed. And in verse number 15, and it said, if, if ye turn away from him, uh, ye, will yet, uh, ye will yet again leave them in the wilderness. Verse 18 uh, it says, and we will not return unto our house until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. And it says, and we will not inherit with them on yonder side Jordan for our for, forward, uh, because our inheritance is fallen upon us on this side Jordan eastward. And Moses said unto them, if ye will do this thing, if ye will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he has driven out the enemy before him. And verse 23, and says, and if, and if ye will not do so, behold, your sins will find you out, and be sure your sins... Be let me read that again. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sins will find you out. And as we look at this story, uh, Gad and Reuben, and you'll find out later, half a tribe of Manassehs, uh, they were happy where they're at because they had cattle, and they thought it was best for them to stay over there. And and the Lord, and they were told, if you don't go, uh, then your your sins will find you out, and you won't get. But if you go over, and if you fight, and leave your children here, and leave everybody here, and go to buy, fight, then you can do that. And as we look at this, I, the thought that I was thought about is, be sure your sins will find you out. And and as I thought about that I, I thought about three or four different things that we want to look at as I thought about be sure your sins will find you out but I want to break it down to this in just a minute but as I think about it as we all go through life God knows what's going on in our life every day. God knows where we stand. God sees our hearts. God sees us. He said in the book of Galatians, I mean, yeah, the book of Galatians 6 and verse number 7, he said, Be not deceived. God is not marked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And as we think about that, and as we look over in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse number 33, uh, verse number 3 of Proverbs 15, and verse number 33, it's talking right here at God's eyes is upon everything. God sees what's going on. God knows where we're at. God knows the, what's in our life. God knows the evilness that we think. God knows the things that we think. God knows our hearts. And as we look at this, I think about that uh, he's a saying this uh, uh, in Proverbs 15 and verse number 3. He's a saying the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. He says in chapter 14 and verse number 12, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And as we look at all of these things, we can see God knows what's going on in our life. As David, I, I, I thought about a number of different people that that uh, that fallen up short. I, I thought about how that uh, uh, Judas fell short. I thought about how that uh, 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 King Herod fell short in act in act 12. I thought about how that uh, 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 Cain fell short in Genesis 4. I thought about how that God knew all of this. I thought about how that David had fallen short in over in uh, 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 2 Samuel 11 and 12, how that uh, he had sinned. He saw Bathsheba. He had uh, sinned in his life when he had her to be brought up to him. And uh, we know the story, how that she conceived, how she bore a son, and how he tried to hide 
denied the son, how he tried to get away from all of this, uh, but yet God knew what was going on. God knew where he was and be, how that he tried to have her, the, the wife, uh, the husband, Uriah the Hittite, sent out to the hot part of the battle to have him shot and had him killed uh, because he was trying to cover up what he had done in his life. We, uh, in my years of ministries, I've sat on boards and, and it's amazing the number of preachers and, and men that I have dealt with with leadership in the in in their churches that that have kind of went astray. The Bible says over in saw over in Hebrews, there's pleasure in sin for a season. And, uh, but as we think about these men that have left their wife and their children and thought they were going to get away with something, but they never got away with it, and they ended up losing their wife and their children uh, because they let something come in their life. Uh, uh, David was the same way. David kind of went astray. David thought, I'll hide it. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart, but yet David uh, sinned, and, and God showed him uh, uh, how that he had sinned. And, and as we think about this, David, uh, uh, the baby died. Uh, uh, we can see something happened to all of his children. Tamar, his daughter, was raped uh, uh, by one of the brothers, how all of this was going on in his life, uh, and, but yet he kept on doing. Uh, uh, finally, God sent Nathan down to talk to him, uh, and uh, he said he told him about a man that had one ewe lamb and another man had all of these and how that he uh, uh, told uh, Nathan he said that man ought to be shot uh, and that man ought to have punishment put upon him and uh, David said you're the man uh, uh, that done the evil and how that we look at this uh, uh, we think we can get by something on God uh, as we look here in this book in the Proverbs chapter 15 uh, and verse number 3 the eyes of the Lord are in every place uh, uh, beholding the evil and the good. Uh, uh, God knows where we've been. God knows what's on our heart. Uh, and be sure your sins will find you out. Uh, God knows. Aren't you glad today? God knows what we are. God knows where we stand at today. I just thank God today that he's a big God. I thank God that he's always there for me. And uh, there's, like I told you, there's others that you could look at too. Uh, you can look at Cain, how that uh, he had sinned in Genesis. Genesis. You can look at these others, uh, how that they have sinned. Uh, uh, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 28 and 13, uh, it said, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, uh, but whosoever fors uh, forsaken can confess and forsake them shall have mercy. Uh, if we confess and forsake our sins, uh, uh, he will forgive us. Uh, how many times do we go through life thinking, uh, I, I remember years ago, I was a little kid. I, I don't know. I must have been eight. Oh, I was older than eight or ten. And I was old enough to know better. Uh, There's a big snow on, and it was cold, and the icicles looked like they was that long uh, up against the man's uh, 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 garage. As I walked up the alley, uh, and as I walked up the alley, I was picking up snow and making snowballs, and I was uh, uh, hitting those icicles. And and as I would hit them, I would just walk on and pick me up another one. Uh, I, but I did not see that big long icicle hanging in front of his window. Threw it into that window. I heard that noise and I thought, my, my, I broke his window. And I looked all around and nobody knew I was there. And I went home like nothing ever happened. Didn't tell nobody about it. Oh, it was years later. I was pastoring in Nashville and I went home to see mom. And while I was home, I said, mom, I got to go see Mr. Schaefer. She said, well, he hadn't been a doing very well, but uh, uh, I'm glad you're going to walk down and see him. And I walked down to see Mr. Schaefer and I said, Mr. Schaefer, you remember that time years ago that uh, your window was broken the back? Uh, yeah, that old Bill Bates across the alley over there had a problem of throwing up rocks and hitting them. And he's the one done that. And I I, uh, he never would tell me, but I know he's the one done it. Uh, uh, you know, on and on and on and rattled. And I finally said, whoa, right there. Uh, uh, Mr. Schaefer, he didn't do that. I did that. What? You know, a window. But over years, God showed me that I needed to take care of that window. 
Mr. Schaefer, before he, he, ever, he would laugh every time he'd see me from that point on about me breaking his window. Nobody, had, uh, he didn't see any, and I didn't, I didn't tell anybody. It made me learn that no matter what it is, we, we need to cover, not cover it up, but we need to get it out in the open so that it can be taken care of. And, and as we look at this, uh, uh, they had a job uh, and they went, to, they said, if you don't go do it, your sins will find you out. In our life, we got something in our heart that only God knows uh, we need to confess. A lot of times, uh, uh, you remember Achim and Ai? Uh, Achim uh, uh, got the silver and the gold and hid it in his tent. Uh, and they said, well, we don't need to take the whole army down there. We can take just a few uh, and we can get the victory. Uh, and they went out there and this little army did, uh, run up against Israel and defeated them and showed them real quick. They could not do it by themselves. Uh, and that was over. Over, over in, jo in Joshua chapter 7, I think's where it was at, and, and how that they had to pay for what they'd done. And finally, they found the, uh, the belongings that was taken in the, in the, in the best floor of his tent, uh, hid in the ground, and, and he had to confess, uh, and he finally was taken out and, and stoned to death. And as we look at this, uh, I, 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 that's the first thing I thought about as I was preparing how that we need to be sure. But I want to break this down and think uh, we need to be sure. What do we need to be sure about? The second thing I thought about was uh, uh, found over in the book of uh, over in the book of Proverbs 27 uh, and, and verse number uh, uh, verse number one. In Proverbs 27 and verse number one, uh, we need to be sure life is short uh, and, and life is uncertain uh, and we need to be sure about it. Uh, uh, we need to realize that no matter who we are, we may think, well, we're going to live forever. We're not going to live forever. My family didn't have a very good, uh, my, my grandpa died when, uh, uh, when he was 38. My brother died when he was 40. My dad died when he was 55. And I'll be a turning 75. And I have to every day say, Lord, thank you for what you've given to me. Thank you for the strength that you've given me. Thank you for the life that you've allowed me to have. Life is certain. We don't none have a guarantee of tomorrow. We none don't have the guarantee of another hour. We none don't have the guarantee of another breath. Uh, we none don't have the guarantee of another uh, getting home and being back to church again. But if we trust in God, God's going to give us what we need. Uh, we need to be sure and think for just a minute. Life is uncertain. As I thought about it, I thought about how that he, uh, Job said in Proverbs 14 and 2, how that life is like a shadow, how that it appears for uh, as we look at it and it's gone. Uh, as I was sitting on my back porch today, I could see the shadow coming across. But uh, while I was there, that shadow just kept getting bigger and bigger because it went uh, going behind a tree. Uh, life is, uh, is like like a shadow. It's here and then it's gone. Life is like grass, as he says over in the book of Isaiah 40 and verse number six, uh, how that uh, my neighbors was all cutting their grass. And uh, I know they wondered why I didn't cut mine. I hate to cut grass. And I knew that as soon as I start cutting grass, it's going to be a summer thing. I finally got it cut, but life is like grass. It's here and then it's gone. Life is like a flower, as he says in Psalms 103. That, it, that, that flower grows up, it looks pretty, it smells good, uh, and all at once its petals begin to fall over. The smell that smells so good is being gone, and the first thing we know, it's up and it's gone, uh, just like our life. Uh, as he says in the book of James chapter 4, uh, we need to realize that life is like a vapor. And as I turn over there in James chapter 4 and verse uh, the, uh, the latter part of that chapter, uh, chapter 4, uh, I want to I want to look for just a minute what he's just saying over here in verse number thirteen. He says, "Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain and get gain." He said, "Whereas uh, ye know not what shall be on um, on tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then it vanishes away." Uh, for he says, "For uh, uh, that ye ought to say up the Lord's will." 
willing, we will live and do this or do that. Uh, and as we think about this, uh, uh, we've all seen the fog. Uh, uh, down where I'm from on the Ohio River, uh, uh, you can get up in the morning and you can't hardly see the white line in the road. Uh, uh, but getting down about 11 o'clock, that white line begins to come out uh, and you begin to see what it is. But for a while, that fog, you could seem like you couldn't cut it with a knife. It was so thick. Uh, and then it begins to go away. And I'm sure it's the same down here. Life is like a vapor, that it's here for a while and then it's gone. Uh, we we got to realize uh, a life is, is not going to be forever. Amen? We've all want to live on. We all want to live longer. I mean, I want to, I used to say I wanted to live to see my grand, my kids all grow up. And now I'm a saying I want to see my kids grow up and their kids grow up. And, 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 and now it's to the point that I'm, there, there's great grandkids and, and you want to see your great grandkids grow up and, and you want to see them get married. You want to see them prosper. You want to see all of this. But I know I'm not going to get to see all of that and I'm going to, I'm going going to make it in my life uh, that if I don't get to see that uh, I'm going to make it to heaven that's what life is all about is to make it to heaven if we haven't got that desire if we haven't got that gold we're not going to make it and, and, and we won't be blessed but we need to be sure life is short we need to be sure our sins will find us out and the third thing I thought about was uh, uh, that we need to be sure we're going to die one of these days unless the rapture takes place we're all going to, no matter who you are. You might say, preacher, uh, my family does this and my family does that. Well, uh, you know, even the undertakers lose their family and lose their life. And he says over in the book of Ecclesiastes 8 and verse number 8, it said, there is a man that seem, there is a, a man that has power. There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain that spirit. Neither has he power in the days of death. No man has that. Yeah, they can put a tube in us and make us live just a little bit longer, uh, but you let them take that tube out and we will probably leave here. Uh, there is none of us that's able to make another. Uh, who was that joker they put in the freezer thinking that he could be brought back to life sometime? I heard the other day they, uh, they, they just thought they'd take him out of the freezer. They realized they couldn't do that. I don't know who it was. It was some movie star or somebody with a lot of money uh, thought he'd be freezing. He'd they'd freeze him until they could put him, to, uh, bring him back to sleep from whatever he had. Uh, listen, they can freeze you. Uh, they can put you, uh, uh, do all of these different things, uh, uh, but nothing is going to keep us from, uh, from living on any longer than God wants us to. The Bible said there, and there is a way that seemeth right on the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And it says, as an appointed on the man wants to die but after this the judgment the Bible says that God has no respect to person that no matter who we are we're going to die one of these days and we need to be ready to face death whenever it's our turn we need to be ready whenever we're ready to go my dad and I was deer hunting on January on 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 uh, December the 3rd 1976 he had a heart attack and died. I didn't want that. The doctor had just given him a bill of health, said, uh, said, you're fine. He had had some heart issues and he had went to the doctor and the doctor had done all the tests and said, you're fine, Carl. You, uh, you just, uh, you're okay that you can go back to work. And uh, he had a bunch of vacation and he had been on vacation and he had been a doing it. And he had just turned 55 and the very same month he turned 55, he got his 30 years in at the plant. He could have retired, but he passed on before he had a chance just to turn 55. We don't know who's, when it's going to be. We don't know what the age is. I remember a few years ago, I had three funerals in a month, and, uh, and that, that's not a lot. But what was so peculiar about the three funerals was uh, one of them was a stillborn baby, uh, one of them was a 40-year-old man, and the other one was a senior citizen, all in the same month that showed me that God had no respect to person, that God's going to take whatever is his turn. 
whatever it might be our turn, whenever it's there, that we need to be ready whenever it is. And as we think about this, we need to, we need to know that we're going to make it to heaven whenever we do. The last thing I want to think about is found over in the book of John chapter 5 and, and verse number 28, 29, uh, somewhere over there. Uh, John uh, uh, ch uh, chapter 5, verse number 28 and 29. And we need to think about, we need to be sure judgment is coming. You might say I'm a member of a church. I've, I said this morning I've been baptized. I've, I've done this and I've done that. Listen, we can be baptized and still die and go to hell. We can be a member of a church and still die and go to hell. What really matters is have we been washed in the blood of Jesus? Have we accepted him as our personal savior? I was in home missions for a, for a number of years and while I was there, I began to knock on doors and I'd ask people, are you saved? I began to realize I was asking them the wrong question. A lot of these older people would say, yes, they saved me in the hospital on the emergency room table. I said, no, I don't mean that kind of save. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your savior? Well, I was bringing up in church and I was baptized when I was a baby and I, I will go to heaven. I said, are you sure? Are you sure that you will go to heaven? Are you really counting on that baptism to get you there? We need to know that we're ready to go. And as we look at this, we need to look at what he says, marvel not at this for the hour is coming at them which all that are in the grave shall hear the voice uh, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Uh, we will all stand before God. We will all answer what we have done. We will all be there before God one of these days uh, and we need to know for a surety that we're ready to go. We need to be sure judgment is coming. It's not just, you know, if, if there wasn't nothing else, uh, I mean, you might say, well, I don't believe all of that. Well, uh, why, why spend all that money putting us in a casket and putting us in the ground and doing all of this? Because we think there's something out there for us one of these days. And I know there's something out here. Look what he says over in the book of uh, uh, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11 through 15, I think it is. And uh, as, I, as I thought about this, I, 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 be, I begin to think Revelation 20 verse 11. He said, uh, and it's called the great white throne judgment. And he said, and I saw the, uh, the, the great white throne and him that sat upon it from whose uh, face the earth had uh, and, the, and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in that book in the book according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in them and death and hell delivered up uh, the, the death that was in them and they were judged every man according to their works uh, uh, and death and hell was cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found uh, written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I'm going to tell you what, I, I, this is what I like in verse number chapter 21 and he said I saw a new heaven new earth for the first heaven and first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the lamb uh, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and he, God himself shall, uh, uh, shall be with them and be their God. Here in verse four, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There'll be no more death, neither sorrow, neither crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. There is coming a time that we need to be sure of. We're gonna stand before judgment and there's no way we can get out of it I believe that you believe that as I thought about this and as I studied God is good and we need to realize we need to be sure about a lot of things 
I preached this morning on, on how that we can uh, uh, live for God, how that we need to do for God, how that we need to be all of these things. But as I think here tonight, we need to be sure uh, that Jesus Christ is alive and that we're he is real and that we know him as our savior if we're not sure if we think we're okay most likely we're not father i thank you for this message i thank you for this time you've given us i thank you for each one that's here lord i thank you for the words that you lord that you put upon our heart we uh, thank you for what we studied. There's still other, other things out there in our life that we could uh, preach, but Lord, you're done with us, and Lord, we thank you for that. Go with us now. Help us that we might all be sure here tonight, and Lord, we know that you're a God that can do all things. We thank you for that in Jesus' name, and amen. As we get a song, and as we sing, and as we think, be sure your sins will find you out. Be sure life is uncertain. Be sure that we're going to die and be sure judgment is coming. Are you ready for those? A stand. <laughs>